Hello everybody, welcome to Daily News Simplified, an answer to what, why and how of newspaper reading. Today we shall be analyzing the Hindu newspaper dated 11th of April 2019 of the New Delhi edition. The topics to be discussed today has been presented on your screen. Time stamping for the same has been provided in the description box below. Let us begin our today's discussion. Now the first article appears on page number 1. The title of the article is From Theory to Fact. Now this particular article highlights that the astronomers have recently released the first ever image of a black hole. Hence this article shall be important from the perspective of prelims under the subsection general science. Apart from that this article is also important because in previous year UPSC prelims 2017 a rated question on black holes has already been asked wherein the question was the terms event horizon singularity, string theory and standard model are sometimes seen in the news in the context of. Now out of these four terms, event horizon and singularity are normally associated with the black holes. Hence the answer to this particular question was A. It is in this particular aspect the article which we are going to discuss becomes extremely important for your upcoming prelims. Before analyzing the different aspects of this particular article, let us first look into its background. Now recently, the astronomers at NASA have released the first ever image of a black hole. This particular black hole has been found in a galaxy known as Messier 87. Now the release of this particular image of the black hole is considered to be quite significant because the release of the image can be considered as one of the greatest breakthrough of this particular century. And more importantly, the release of this particular image validates Einstein's theory of relativity. The black holes are considered to be massive bodies with huge amount of density because of which their force of gravity is extremely strong. It is so strong that even the light cannot escape the black hole. It is because of this peculiar nature of the black hole, the scientists were unable to take the image of the black hole. Now what the scientists have done here in order to take the first ever image is that they have assembled the data which has been gathered by 8 radio telescopes situated across the world and all these 8 radio telescopes together form the event horizon telescope and as you can see here this telescope is named after event horizon which is a phenomena associated with the black holes and the scientists accordingly revealed that this particular black hole is approximately 6 billion times the size of our sun which means to say this black hole is extremely huge as well as massive. Hence as part of this video analysis we shall be discussing various aspects related to black holes such as what exactly are black holes, how black holes are formed, the structure of black hole wherein we will be discussing the concept of the event horizon and singularity, the types of black holes, how the black holes were observed before and more importantly how this particular image of the black hole was taken by the astronomers. Let us start analyzing these aspects of the article one by one. Now coming to what exactly are the black holes. Now black holes can be considered to be a region in space which have got extremely higher mass and because of their extremely higher mass no object can escape from their gravitational pull. In order to understand this particular phenomena let us revisit the fundamental concept of physics. Now you all must be aware under the fundamental physics the force exerted by a body is directly proportional to its mass which means to say higher the mass of the body higher would be the gravitational force exerted by such a body. It is because of this all the bodies in the universe such as planets, earth, sun etc exert their own gravitational force. Now for example, if you throw a stone towards the sky, this particular stone would rise to a particular height and after rising to a particular height, this stone would invariably fall to the earth's surface because of the earth's gravitational force. Which means to say, the gravitational force of the earth pulls the stone towards itself. So if you want the stone to escape the earth's gravity and not fall back on the earth's surface, we would be required to throw the stone at the escape velocity from the earth's surface and the escape velocity for the earth has been calculated as 11.2 km per second. 
it is precisely this particular concept which has been used in the launches of rockets as well as satellites so if the rockets and satellites are launched at a velocity which is higher than the escape velocity of the earth then they can escape the earth's gravity however in case of black holes they are so massive that the gravitational force is extremely strong and it is so strong that even the light cannot escape from the black hole since the fastest moving object in the universe happens to be light no object including light cannot escape from the gravitational force of the black hole it is this peculiar property of the black holes which make them extremely unique to our universe having understood the peculiar property of the black holes let us understand as to how the black holes are actually formed the black holes are considered to be formed at the end of the life cycle of a massive star that is to say the black holes are formed upon the death of a massive star now if you look at this particular diagram here this diagram explains the life cycle of a star where in the first stage of a life cycle of a star happens to be the stellar nebula and depending upon the size of the stellar nebula it may either get converted into an average star or a massive star where in the average star ultimately forms a white dwarf upon its death however a massive star goes on to form a black hole upon its death and such a black hole is normally formed after a explosion known as the supernova in this regard let us understand the exact mechanism of the formation of black hole so if one looks at a stable star a stable star is under the influence of two forces and both these forces are in balance with each other now these two forces are the gravitational force which has been highlighted by the red color in this particular diagram and the nuclear fusion force which has been highlighted by the green color in this particular diagram and as you can see in this particular diagram here the gravitational force always acts inwards towards the center of the body however the nuclear fusion reaction which is taking place inside the body of the star creates a force which acts outwards from the body of the star so there are two forces which are acting on a stable star the gravitational force which is acting inwards and the nuclear fusion force which is acting outwards and if you look at the effects of these two forces the gravitational force tends to decrease the size of the star on the other hand the nuclear fusion force tends to increase the size of the star because the nuclear fusion force is acting outwards whereas the gravitational force is acting inwards so because these two forces are in balance with each other such a star remains stable that is to say it neither increases nor decreases in its size however when the star reaches the fat end of its life cycle the nuclear fusion reaction which was earlier taking place inside the star suddenly stops because of this the nuclear fusion force which was acting outwards also stops so the only force which acts on a star happens to be the gravitational force which is acting inwards and as we have discussed since the size of a star is extremely massive such a high gravitational force ultimately leads to the collapse of a star and such a collapse of a star is accompanied by a loud explosion which is referred to as the supernova and such a supernova in turn leads to the formation of the black hole and one important point which is to be noted here is that not all the stars lead to the formation of black holes rather only those stars which are considered to be quite massive lead to the formation of black holes upon the supernova explosion now coming to the structure of a black hole a black hole essentially consists of two different parts these are singularity and the event horizon now as we have discussed the black holes are formed due to the death of a star and this is formed upon an explosion known as the supernova so upon the explosion of a star the entire mass of a star gets concentrated into a single place due to the higher force of gravity now the place at which the entire mass gets concentrated can be referred to as the singularity so singularity essentially means the place where the entire mass of the black hole actually resides so all around the singularity the gravitational force of the black hole is extremely strong 
due to the higher mass of the black hole on the other hand the second part of the black hole is the event horizon now the event horizon can be considered to be a form of a spherical boundary wherein the escape velocity of the black hole becomes equal to the gravitational pull exerted by the black hole now what this essentially means here is that if a body is outside the event horizon then it can easily escape the gravitational pull of the black hole on the other hand if the body enters into the event horizon then it won't be able to escape from the gravitational pull exerted by the black hole this can be understood from the fact that outside the event horizon the gravitational pull exerted by the black hole is lesser than the speed of the light it is because of this the bodies can easily escape from the gravitational pull of the black holes on the other hand if a body enters into the event horizon under such circumstances the gravitational pull exerted by the black holes would be much higher than the speed of the light which means to say the body would continue to get pulled in by the black holes so one peculiar feature of the black holes is that the bodies can easily enter into the event horizon however upon entering they won't be able to come out of the event horizon because the gravitational pull of the black holes is so massive that they get sucked in into the singularity so the same thing can be said about the light as well the light can enter into the event horizon however it cannot exit from the event horizon because of the higher gravitational pull now let us understand as to why is it difficult to detect the presence of the black holes now as we have discussed the light can enter into the event horizon however it cannot exit from the event horizon so if you have to observe any body in the universe we should be able to detect the light emitted by such a body for example we are able to detect the presence of moon because we are able to detect the light which is reflected by the moon however in case of black holes since light is not emitted by the black hole it becomes extremely difficult from the astronomers to detect the presence of the black holes it is precisely because of this particular reason such bodies are referred to as the black holes thus the presence of black holes cannot be observed directly through the telescopes situated on the ground however the presence of the black holes can actually be inferred through the interaction of the other bodies with the black holes for example if we observe that a particular star is revolving around an invisible body then we can come to a conclusion that such an invisible body could be a black hole further if a star comes very close to the black hole so because of the higher gravitational pull exerted by the black hole the star may be torn apart so when the star is torn apart it breaks into multiple pieces and such pieces get accelerated leading to emission of the x rays now the presence of such x rays can be detected by the telescope so what this clearly shows here is that the black holes cannot be observed directly through the telescopes however their presence can be inferred through the interaction of the bodies with the black holes it is because of this particular reason the recent image released by the astronomers can be considered as a major scientific breakthrough further as we have discussed it is extremely difficult to directly observe the black hole however the astronomers have recently been able to take the image of a black hole hence in this regard let us understand as to how this image of the black hole was actually taken by the astronomers as we have discussed the black hole has basically two parts the singularity where the entire mass of the black hole resides and the event horizon where the escape velocity becomes equal to the force of gravity now it is observed that whenever the gases fall into the event horizon they get extremely heated up so since the gases are immensely heated up this leads to emission of light from the surface of the event horizon and this particular light travels towards the earth's surface however in order to analyze the light which is emitted from the surface of the event horizon we need to have a telescope which should be as big as the size of the earth hence in order to solve this particular problem the astronomers had come up with a unique initiative known as the event horizon telescope now the event horizon telescope is essentially a network of eight different radio telescopes which are situated across the world 
and all these eight radio telescopes are synchronized to work together by using atomic clocks so since all these eight radio telescopes are working in a synchronized manner each of these radio telescopes would be able to collect as well as record the light which is emitted and such a data is then combined in order to build the image of a black hole so this clearly shows that the astronomers were able to take the image of a black hole by a unique initiative known as the event horizon telescope now these are some of the important aspects which one must know with respect to this particular article with this let us now move to the next article now the next article appears on page number 9 the title of the article is gubernatorial impropriety this article shall be important from the perspective of gs paper 2 governance under the subsection appointment to various constitutional post powers functions and responsibilities of the various constitutional bodies the governor of a state occupies a very important constitutional post in india the governor forms a vital link between the center and the state wherein he represents the center at the state level and he represents the state at the central level now because of the importance attached to the office of governor the governor is required to act in a impartial neutral as well as unbiased manner and he has to promote the spirit of cooperative federalism that means to say he has to ensure that there is a proper coordination between the center and states and this is extremely important in a country like india because india is facing multiple problems such as poverty issues related to security and terrorism climate change etc and we cannot solve these multiple problems unless there is effective coordination between the center and states and such a effective coordination can be brought about through the office of governor however what has happened in the recent times is that the office of governor has turned controversial wherein some of the governors have acted in a partial and political manner at the behest of the central government similarly it has been observed that whenever there is a change in the ruling party at the central level there has been mass removal of the governors appointed by the previous governments it is because of this reason the punchi committee on center state relations had highlighted that there is growing politicization of the office of governor because of which the independence and autonomy of the office of governor has got compromised and this controversy related to office of governor has mainly arisen with respect to the exercise of discretionary powers by the governors under article 163 so if you look at article 163 it states that there shall be council of ministers headed by chief minister in order to aid and advise governor in exercise of his functions however article 163 goes on to states that the governor can exercise his discretionary powers in certain exceptional circumstances now if you look at the wording of article 163 it clearly states that the discretionary powers of the governor can be exercised only in those cases where the governor is required to exercise his discretionary power either under the indian constitution or if it is required by the indian constitution that means to say that the governor can exercise his discretionary powers only under compelling circumstances and more importantly such compelling circumstances should have arisen because of the provisions of the indian constitution so if one looks at the spirit of indian constitution with respect to exercise of discretionary powers by the governor it can be stated that the exercise of discretionary powers of the governor should be activated by good faith it should be dictated by a reason and more importantly the governor has to exercise necessary caution with respect to exercise of discretionary powers however it is observed that the governors have acted in a partial and political manner with respect to exercise of their discretionary powers hence as part of this video analysis we'll first understand as to what are the discretionary powers of the governor and more importantly why these discretionary powers have proved to be controversial secondly we we'll look into certain reforms with respect to the appointment and removal of the governor as suggested by sarkaria committee as well as the punchi committee now coming to the discretionary powers of the governor now the indian constitution does not explicitly provide 
the list of discretionary powers of the governor however looking at the nature of functions performed by the office of governor one can infer the discretionary powers exercised by him for example whenever the state legislature passes a bill such a bill goes to the governor for his assent so when a bill passed by the concerned state legislature goes to the governor under his discretionary powers the governor can either give his assent or withhold his assent to the bill similarly under article 200 of the indian constitution when a bill is passed by the state legislature the governor can even refer the bill for the approval of the president on the similar lines article 164 of the indian constitution states that the chief minister of a state shall be appointed by the governor however in case of a hung assembly that is to say if no party wins a majority then the governor can exercise his discretionary powers with respect to the appointment of chief minister similarly the governor can also exercise his discretionary powers with respect to the dismissal of the government which has lost confidence of the state legislative assembly however such a government refuses to quit under such circumstances the governor can exercise his discretionary powers to dismiss the government further you all must be aware that under article 356 of the indian constitution the president's rule can be imposed in the states on account of the breakdown of constitutional machinery and this president's rule can be imposed based upon a report submitted by the governor of a state so these are some of the discretionary powers exercised by the governors in india now the governor in india is required to exercise these discretionary powers in a neutral and a unpartisan manner however it has been observed that the governors have tended to use the discretionary powers for certain political gains for example with respect to appointment of chief minister when there is a hung assembly it has been observed that the governors have taken decision based upon political reasons similarly the governors have also given a politically biased report for the imposition of the president's rule in the states so because of the exercise of discretionary powers by the governors in a arbitrary manner the office of governor has proved to be controversial so in order to improve the working of the office of governor there is a need to bring about reforms with respect to the appointment and removal of the governor and these reforms have been suggested by both sarkariya committee as well as punchi committee so before discussing the recommendations of sarkariya and punchi committee let us understand the present mechanism for the appointment and removal of the governor now with respect to appointment of the governor it is dealt under article 155 of the indian constitution which states that the governor of a state shall be appointed by the president by warrant under his hand and seal and the only qualifications laid down in the constitution with respect to office of governors are that the governor should be citizen of india and secondly the governor should have completed the age of 35 years which means to say there is no elaborate qualifications needed for the person to be appointed as the governor similarly article 156 of the indian constitution deals with the removal of the governor wherein the article 156 states that the governor shall hold office during the pleasure of the president so even though the indian constitution provides a tenure of 5 years for the office of governor the governor can be removed at the will of the president now this clearly shows that the office of governor in india do not enjoy the security of tenure because of this particular problem the office of governor is undergoing politicization in india so to address these problems related to appointment and removal of the governor the recommendations given by the sarkari and punchi committee are firstly with respect to the appointment of the governor both sarkari and punchi committee have given a list of criteria to be chosen by the president for the appointment of governor the first criteria here is that a person to be appointed as governor should be a eminent person in some walk of life secondly such a person should be from outside the state thirdly a person should be a detached figure and he should not be intimately connected with the local politics of the states and lastly a person to be appointed as a governor should not have taken part in the politics generally and particularly in the recent past in this regard both sarkariya committee as well as punchi committee were of a belief that 
if this particular criteria is chosen for the appointment of a person as a governor then automatically we would be able to ensure the independence and autonomy of the office of governor similarly with respect to removal of the governor as we have discussed the governor can be removed at the will of the president which shows that the governor do not enjoy the security of tenure thus in order to provide security of tenure to the office of governor i aim to prevent undue politicization of his office the punchi committee has recommended that article 156 of the indian constitution has to be amended and through this particular amendment the phrase during the pleasure of the president has to be deleted apart from that as you all must be aware article 61 of the indian constitution provides for the impeachment of the president by the parliament so the punchi committee has recommended that a similar provision for the impeachment of the governor by the state legislature has to be provided under article 156 so with respect to removal of the governor the punchi committee has suggested two major recommendations the first recommendation is that the term during the pleasure of the president should have to be deleted from article 156 secondly there is a need to provide for the impeachment of the office of governor on the lines of the impeachment of the president thirdly it is commonly observed that when a person demits the office of governor he or she in turn gets an appointment either under the state government or under the union government or such a person may actually take up active politics and it is because of these reasons some of the governors can act in a partial and non neutral manner so to address this particular problem the punchi committee has suggested that the governor should not be eligible for any other appointment either under the union government or under the state government upon the end of their tenure however they should be eligible for the second term as governor or they should be eligible for fighting elections for the office of either the vice president or the president of india similarly punchi committee has also recommended that upon the end of the tenure the governor should not return to the active politics so these are some of the important aspects which one must know with respect to this particular article based upon our discussion an expected upsc mains question from this particular article could be the office of governor has turned controversial in the recent times leading to the deterioration in the center state relations in this regard examine the need for reforms with respect to the appointment and removal of the governor now you can try writing answer to this particular question based upon our video analysis with this let us now take up the next article now the next article appears on page number 8 the title of the article is forcing china's hand this article shall be important from the perspective of gs paper 2 international relations under the subsection effect of policies and politics of the developed countries on india's interest now you all must be aware that after the pulwama attacks on the crpf personnel india has reached out to the global community in order to put pressure on pakistan to stop funding of terror elements in its country india has been seeking the support of the united nations security council in order to blacklist the jaish e mohammed chief masood azhar However India's efforts to blacklist Azhar has met little success due to Chinese opposition it is to be noted that China has used its veto power to block the UNSC resolution on Masood Azhar at least four times in the last decade it is in this particular regard this article here highlights the recent diplomatic clashes between USA and China over the blacklisting of Masood Azhar by the United Nations Security Council Recently United States of America introduced a draft UNSC resolution in order to blacklist Masood Azhar through the blacklisting of Jaish-e Mohammed chief Masood Azhar United States of America intended to put a travel ban on Masood Azhar as well as to freeze his assets now even before United States of America even France had proposed to list Masood Azhar under the 1267 Al Qaeda sanctions committee it is to be remembered that 1267 al qaeda sanctions committee essentially deals with the sanctions on both al qaeda as well as the islamic state so india has been raising concerns that masood azhar has been receiving the funding from al qaeda it is because of this reason france had proposed to list masood azhar under the 1267 al qaeda sanctions committee 
However, this proposal put forward by France was in turn blocked by China. In this regard, what could possibly be the reason for the United States of America to introduce the UNSC resolution, particularly when it is aware that such a resolution would be invariably blocked by China? Now, this particular article here has highlighted that in spite of the fact that such an UNSC resolution could be blocked by China, USA has introduced this UNSC resolution in order to showcase to the entire world community that China is not a willing and cooperative partner with respect to its fight against global terrorism. So by introducing this UNSC resolution, USA wants to showcase to the entire world community that China cannot be trusted for its fight against global terrorism. Similarly, the US Secretary of State has recently accused China of violating the human rights of the Uyghur Muslims in the Xinjiang region of China. So by highlighting the fact that China has been violating the human rights of the Uyghur Muslims in the Xinjiang region, USA wants to showcase to the entire Islamic world that China is not respectful to the Muslim sentiments. Apart from that, with respect to the South Asia policy, it can be clearly observed that post the Pulwama attacks, USA has been openly supporting India with respect to UNSC resolution. However, China has been openly supporting Pakistan. In this regard, the article here has highlighted that US initiative to blacklist Masood Azhar at the United Nations Security Council marks a new turn in the US policy towards India. So these are some of the important aspects which one must know with respect to this particular article. With this, let us now take up the next article. Now the next article appears on page number 8. The title of the article is Trickeries of the Money Bill. Now whenever the finance minister presents a union budget, the union budget mainly consists of the finance bill and the appropriation bill, wherein the finance bill basically deals with the income side of the budget and contains the proposals related to the taxation. On the other hand, appropriation bill deals with the matters of expenditure. So through the passage of the appropriation bill, the government seeks the approval of the parliament in order to withdraw the money from the Consolidated Fund of India. So if one looks at the finance bill, since the finance bill deals with the matters related to taxation, the finance bill is always a money bill as defined under Article 110 of the Indian Constitution. However, when the finance bill was introduced in the year 2017, this particular financial bill not only contained the proposals related to taxation, but it also contained other matters related to the various tribunals in India. For example, through the Financial Bill 2017, the government sought to merge the Competition Appellate Tribunal with the National Company Law Appellate Tribunal. Apart from that, the Financial Bill 2017 also dealt with the provisions related to the National Green Tribunal. So the question which can be raised here is that whether the financial bill can contain only the matters related to taxation or can it contain even other matters as well. This is because as we have discussed the financial bill is essentially a money bill. So if the government decides to include other matters in the financial bill then the powers of the Rajya Sabha can be substantially curtailed. This is because the Rajya Sabha in India has limited powers with respect to the money bill. Now for example, when the financial bill 2017 introduced various aspects related to tribunals in India, the Rajya Sabha had limited powers in order to approve those changes. It is because of this particular reason, the introduction of financial bill 2017 has proved to be extremely controversial. Now this particular aspect of the article has been comprehensively been covered in our DNS dated 29th of March 2019. So I request you to go through this particular DNS dated 29th of March 2019 in order to understand this particular lead article. With this, let us now take up the next article. Now the next article appears on page number 13. The title of the article is High Stock of Non-Performing Assets in India, More Progress Needed, IMF. This article shall be important from the perspective of GS Paper 3 
Economy under the subsection Indian Economy and Various Issues. Now, this particular article has appeared in the newspaper because the International Monetary Fund has recently published the Global Financial Stability Report. Now, it is to be noted that this particular report is actually a semi annual report, that is to say, it is released twice every year, usually in the month of April as well as October. And as the name suggests, this particular report highlights the stability of the global financial market. Earlier, the International Monetary Fund used to publish two different reports. These reports being the International Capital Market Report and the Emerging Market Financing Report. Now, the Global Financial Stability Report has actually replaced these two previous reports. And as the title of this particular article suggests, the Global Financial Stability Report has raised concerns with respect to the growing non-performing assets of the banks in India. It is in this regard, the report has highlighted that the government has to take urgent measures in order to reduce the non-performing assets. Now, this particular report becomes extremely important because it is normally observed that in UPSC prelims, questions have been asked with respect to the reports published by international organizations. So please make a note of the fact that the Global Financial Stability Report is published by IMF. With this, let us now take up the next article. Now the next article appears on page number 9. The title of the article is Electoral Bonds. This article shall be important from the perspective of GS Paper 2, Governance, under the subsection Important Aspects of Governance, Transparency and Accountability. Now this particular article here discusses about the concept of electoral bonds. Now in our DNS dated 17th of November 2018, we have comprehensively covered all the aspects related to the electoral bonds, wherein in our DNS we have covered concepts such as what exactly is the electoral bond, how electoral bonds can improve the transparency in funding of elections as well as the issues with respect to the electoral bonds in India. So I request you to go through this particular DNS dated 17th of November 2018 to have a comprehensive and holistic idea related to the electoral bonds in India. Now the next article appears on page number 1. The title of the article is Election Commission puts on hold the release of biopic on Prime Minister Modi. This article shall be important from the perspective of GS Paper 2 Governance under the subsection Salient Features of the Representation of People's Act. It is to be noted that this particular topic deals with the issue of electoral reforms in India. Now this particular article here has highlighted that the Election Commission of India has decided to defer the release of biopic Mui on the Prime Minister Modi. And the rationale given by the Election Commission was that the release of this particular Mui is not in conformity with the model code of conduct. Further, the Election Commission was of the belief that if the Mui is released, then it has a potential to disturb the level playing field among the political parties. That means to say, the release of the biopic Mui on the Prime Minister Modi could unduly sway the voters in its favour. It is because of this particular reason, the Election Commission of India has decided to defer the release of the biopic Mui. Now, with respect to your upcoming prelims, this article is not that important. However, one is required to understand about the various aspects related to the model code of conduct. Now, in our DNS dated 31st of Jan 2019, we have comprehensively covered all the aspects related to the model code of conduct. So, I request you to go through this particular DNS dated 31st of Jan 2019 to understand various aspects of the model code of conduct. Now, based upon a video analysis, these four questions shall be a prelims question for the practice. Please pause this video and try to find answers to these four questions. We will be discussing the answer after 5 seconds. The first statement here is consider the following statements related to the black holes. The black holes are normally formed at the end of the life cycle of a massive star. As we have discussed this statement here is correct. The second statement reads as the light can get trapped within the black holes. Even this statement here is correct. So if you look at the options which are given here, the correct answer to this particular question is C. That is both 1 and 2. Now coming to the second question, the question here is 
consider the following statements related to the event horizon telescope the first statement here is it has been set up in order to capture the image of a black hole as we have discussed this statement here is correct the second statement reads as it is a single telescope which has been stationed in the space now this statement here is wrong this is because the event horizon telescope consists of eight radio telescopes which have been stationed on the ground so if you look at the options which are given here the correct answer to this question is a that is one only now coming to the third question the question here is consider the following statements related to the money bill the first statement reads as the money bill can be introduced only in the lok sabha now this statement here is correct this is because the money bill cannot be introduced in the rajya sabha the second statement reads as the rajya sabha cannot reject the money bill but it can only make amendments now even this particular statement here is wrong this is because the rajya sabha can neither reject the money bill nor can it amend the money bill the rajya sabha can only suggest amendments to the money bill and such kind of suggestions of the rajya sabha may or may not be considered by the lok sabha the third statement reads as in case of disagreement there is a provision for joint sitting of the both the houses of the parliament now this statement here is wrong this is because there is no provision for the joint sitting in case of the money bill so if you look at the options which are given here the correct answer to this question is a that is one only now coming to the fourth question which was asked in the upsc prelims 2013 the question was which among the following statements here is correct the first statement is in india the same person cannot be appointed as a governor for two or more states at the same time now this statement here is wrong this is because a person can be appointed as a governor for two or more states the second statement reads as the judges of the high court of the states in india are appointed by the governor of the state as the judges of the supreme court are appointed by the president now even this statement here is wrong this is because the judges of the high court are also appointed by the president the third statement reads as no procedure has been laid down in the constitution of india for the removal of a governor from his post as we have discussed here this statement here is correct so looking at the options the correct answer to this particular question is c with this we have come to end of today's discussion now let us look at the question for the day